how would you like to increase your website's traffic by over 200% in two months? Hey, this is Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And in this episode, I'm speaking to you and sharing with you part one of a training that we did in our Inner Circle Mastermind call with Shopify SEO expert Benjamin Struznik from Golden Web, where they leverage quick SEO wins for organic growth for e-commerce business owners. Now, in this podcast episode, Benjamin and I just break down what a whole audit looks like of an e-commerce business and what they actually do with their audit, how they restructure the site and restructure the architecture to clean the site up, just strip away a lot from it and speed up the site, which also helps with conversion rate optimization, making the e-commerce business more sales and what actually goes into that. So there's a big conversation around that. And then we talk about how Ben actually does keyword research for e-commerce content creation. And then how he structures what he does with that keyword research and the hundreds of thousands of uh, keywords that he actually goes away and scrapes and finds. And then what he does with those keywords, how he condenses those down and how he creates a content structure that allows the content to get ranked in Google and bring in organic traffic to that e-commerce business through the content. And then we talk about how they actually do link building and not just link building to the content either, how to do link building for e-commerce businesses. There's so much in this podcast episode, you're gonna absolutely love it, so let's get stuck in. Today's episode is brought to us by Niche Website Builders, which is a company a few of my clients are using and have used for content creation and link building services. They do everything from start to finish. So from keyword research all the way to uploading your completed article for you. We've also had Bob members buy ready-made affiliate sites built by Niche Website Builders. So if you're looking to outrank your competitors' content and build better backlinks, Niche Website Builders and I have a special deal for you. Head to nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. But again, that's www.nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob. Bob, do you want to start investing in websites but don't want to drop $20,000 or more on your first investment? Check out Odie's where you can buy premium aged domains to build a website on and add done for you affiliate site packages to help you grow your website and get seen. Instead of buying a crummy website that's been built to sell with no authority, buy a premium aged domain with built-in authority, great SEO and fresh quality content for your website. Odie's right now has a crazy 30% off summer sale on until the end of August. So head to odies.global to check out their great deals. That's O-D-Y-S dot G-L-O-B-A-L. Link will be in the description too. Benjamin, welcome. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. It's been a long time coming. I'll tell you that much. I think it was maybe a year and a, maybe a year and a half ago that we started chatting by email. Um, yeah, yeah, year and a half, I think. Maybe even two. Maybe, yeah. It's, wow, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. And so you, so you started Golden Web, and you've also got somebody who's a partner of yours, Mark Whitman, who's been on the podcast before as well, mm-hmm. which is quite cool. Yeah. So today I want to talk about. I've gone through some of your you know, some of the results that you've gotten for your clients and just, they're awesome. One, one of which you got 200% increase in organic traffic within two months for somebody in their, in their e-commerce business. I think it was in the outdoor space, but I, I kind of want to just break that down on what does that look like for yourself as a company? You know, when somebody comes and you say, they say, Hey, Benjamin, can you please help me with my, with SEO for my e-commerce business? Where do you go from there? So I guess first up, let's break that down a bit. Like people come to you and then what happens? You do an audit, right? What normally goes into an audit? Like what sort of the audit is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like just to kind of give you an idea of why we always prioritize the audit, because to be honest, we get a lot of inquiries about, do you do content? Do you do links? Do these, do that? Mm. And we always just kind of say that, okay, if, if we're going to work together, let's do this right and let's start with an audit. And the reason why we why we do that is because, of course, you're going to need content and links to rank, but you're going to get a much better return on investment from the content links if your site has the foundation sorted out, which means just doing the audit. And the audit is simply a technical 
on-page and off-page SEO audit. And given that we specialize with e-commerce, we also do a little bit of conversion rate optimization just because we work with uh, very large brands and we tend to, to know what, what works in terms of just um, adjusting things on the site to um, squeeze a bit more um, conversions out of there. Yeah, cool. So you you talk about like that stuff that you can start to focus on once you've got everything structurally in the right position and the good foundations. What do you mean by the structure of the site? Like someone comes to you with an e-commerce website that has a bad structure. What do you do to help have a, a good structure? And what does a good structure even look like? So like when you say structure, it's not like there is one thing that needs to be fixed, but rather, for example, just when we do the audit, we take a look through 285 different things uh, wow. and it's going to be absolutely everything. So there will be things like mixed content errors, problems in the code with the technical SEO, problems with loading, especially if you're on Shopify or something like that. It's, it's quite funny. Every time that you install an app and when you uninstall it, just because of how Shopify is set up and because it's still quite a new interface, when you install an app, for example, and when you remove it, when you uninstall it, the app will still leave the code in. This is especially like a problem with, with even some of the top apps and just things like that. And then you will obviously have other issues like unoptimized meta titles in some uh, like of part of the on-page SEO. You will have spammy domains. You will have, especially with, la with larger brands, we see broken backlinks. Like we just started working now with the with a huge brand, I think they have over a thousand broken backlinks. Oof. So yeah, I mean, just just implementing uh, all of the kind of the suggestions and, for example, recapturing a thousand broken backlinks that are coming from very very solid media publications. Mm. Just the amount of value that you're able to 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 just instantly add to the website just by fixing it up, in my opinion, is one of the main reasons like why we we start with this. Yeah. So say for this brand that has broken backlinks from, you know, Huffington Post or, you know, big media publications like entrepreneur.com or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it must take some time for you to access the right person once contacting them to get that link fixed, right? Is that is that the process well, that you would normally go through to get actually, these? Broken? Yeah, so it's actually a bit different because on, on their end, it's going to be quite tricky to get them to change out the link because mm -hmm. they already have the link pointed and it's just going to take way too much time. But rather what we can do is adjust it on our end because the link is going on our website. So the easiest way for us to adjust that is just to create, either recreate that old page that no longer exists on our site or just to create a 301 redirect. Yes. Because all a broken link is, it's just a link that they pointed on our website and then we either modified the URL of that page or we deleted the page. That's why we just have two options. We can either recreate the page or we can redirect that URL to another uh, kind of relevant page just so that we can recapture the, the link power. Because if you have the link going to a 404 page, you won't get any SEO benefit. Yeah, great. Cool. And so 280 plus things in this um, audit. What, is, what are probably the top two to three most critical things that you do check that it may, may make up the 80-20? of the, uh, and it may be five things, but what would those things be that make up the 80-20 of that audit? Yeah, yeah. So the first thing would be just checking uh, kind of the performance and setup of the code, especially on Shopify. Shopify recently pushed out something Shopify called Shopify 2.0, which is just an upgraded version of kind of the Shopify platform. And it's just been modified to, to work better with uh, Core Web Vitals in Search Console. Um, if someone like, as, as you know, like Shopify had a lot of problems with Core Web Vitals, just the previous version of Shopify, and they're very, very difficult to resolve just because of the way Shopify is set up. And one of the things that we recommend um, is not only to get the code cleaned up and remove all the apps that are not uh, they're not using anymore, but also uh, consider upgrading to Shopify 2.0 just because of how how much faster it is. So that would be kind of like the top thing just going through everything and seeing what we can do in terms of code. So just focusing on technical SEO. Next, I would mention things like unoptimized index. So as you know, Google, Google has a limited kind of amount of resources that it will dedicate to each website on the internet, just because it has so many websites to go through. And 
With that said, you want to make sure that every page that you have indexed and visible to Google is a high quality page. And with Shopify, again, by default, this is a, a problem because Shopify will index pagination. So let's say that you have a collection page. It will index not only page one, but also page two, page three, page four, page five, which are, are all just copies of, of page one, right? So they're duplicates. Mm. So you obviously wouldn't want that in the index. Then things like tags. Tags are super useful in Shopify for organizing your backend. But if they're publicly available and, and indexed in Google, they again just clog up uh, Google's index. So of course, something that you don't want. Um, and then next one, I would say just looking to the links, like I mentioned for broken links, for example, if you go out and especially with kind of the size of the brands that we work with, if you go out and actually buy a placement on a website, like, I don't know, Forbes, entrepreneur.com, it would probably run you about $1,000 to $2,000. Yeah, these websites have just links on there pointed to, to a, broken, a broken page. Mm. Obviously, you have a bunch of other things that, that should be checked, like basic on-page, just optimizing each, uh, each page and each uh, meta title for their target keywords. But I would say that's kind of the 80 20 of it, just making sure that, that everything works good and just running some basic tests to make sure that you don't have broken, broken images, like broken, uh, broken links, broken code, most importantly, just so that the user has a good experience. Yeah, right. So you're cleaning up, basically, it sounds like you're cleaning up the architecture of the site to make it load faster so the user has a, a faster page so they can go through and, and buy things and shop through the, through the online store a lot quicker. Is that right? That's, yeah, that's part, again, it's, it's part, of, part of the whole process. Basically, just finding every single error that, that we can find and cleaning it up because you will never... You, you will never know what's going to move the needle. And it's like stacking these 1% increases. And I'm, I mean, just if you compare it to, I don't know, something like compounding in the like finance in industry, 1%, yeah. 1%, 1%, and then it all compounds and you have a huge increase. You now, it's not like one thing will, sure, some things will do more than others, but it's not like one thing will change everything. That's why we focus on absolutely everything we can get all fixed up. Um, and then proceed with, um, with obviously the, the links, the content and everything like that. I'm a big fan of compounding and I don't believe compounding is just a philosophy or a principle for finance. I believe it's hugely beneficial if we put it on our side. And this is a bit of a side tangent. I did a training on people having the perception that time is against you versus time is with you. And normally when somebody has a goal set, they try to make sure they can rush towards that goal and try and achieve that goal as quick as possible because they want to achieve that goal super quick. But by doing so, that can make it really, really hard because you put too much pressure and stress on yourself rather than, and that's coming from the position of thinking that you don't have enough time because you want to achieve mm -hmm. this goal by X. Whereas if you give yourself more time, you can put the law or the principle or philosophy or whatever you want to call it of compounding in your favor. Because all of those little things, like you said, all these little things that you do, compounding, add up to one big massive shift in terms of the increase of organic traffic, right? So those little things, is that what helped you get this 200% increase in organic traffic? Just multiple little things testing out it's, that? Or? It's always like that, yeah. It's yeah. always like that. It's never just one thing. I mean, sure, like optimizing the, the user experience will kind of be the reason why conversion rates go up. Mm. But in terms of SEO, it's always a mix of things. Plus, you never really know what caused the, the increase just because Google obviously won't tell you. So <laughs> uh, we found that if we just get everything fixed up and instead of just focusing on one aspect, we, we just tend to kind of get the, the win ratio in, in our favor because it pretty much uh, always works. Yeah, cool. So you do some CRO, conversion rate optimization as well, right? I would, I mean, I wouldn't call uh, Golden Lab like a conversion rate optimization agency, but just because we work with, with these larger brands, um, we kind of tend to see what works. So for example, just a very basic example, let's say that you, that you have an e-commerce site, someone goes to the product page and adds something to the cart. Not like, this is not a very common practice, but when you add something to the cart, you obviously want to present the user with a, with a pop-up or like something that they need to do next right so either you will redirect them to the cart 
or you will have some kind of a pop-up of, of the card just so that they can continue to the checkout. However, you like you wouldn't believe me, but so many stores don't even have that pop-up set up. You will go onto the page, you will add something to the cart, and maybe the, the icon will change from zero items to uh, in the cart to one, but nothing will pop up. There won't be a clear next step for the user, maybe like a small notification somewhere at the top, which can be easily missed. So just basic th- things like that, just making sure that it's a smooth and easy process for the user to actually go from hearing about you to actually converting and, and buying something. Yeah, great. But you, So just out of access and working with so many people, same with me, is like when I work with Matt and all the other people that are in the mastermind, I get access to all these different businesses that help me learn what's working, what's not working, that can cross-pollinate into other businesses mm-hmm. that's similar with what you what you find in your work but i guess your main goal is to increase that organic traffic and do you do that order and then once that order is done say you carry out that audit and it, you are able to increase the traffic for for that site particular e-commerce site where do you go for where do you go next where do you go to there in terms of the e-commerce business owners like this is great i want more <laughs> What do you? What sort of work do you do then in terms of additional things you can do for growth? Like, are we talking like content and then link building as well, or yeah? So, as part of the the audit, something that we that we also do is uh, collection and product keyword mapping. Basically, it's it's going through the website and finding all the pages that already rank, rank well and defining the target keyword for that page as well as all the keyword variations. Then we. As part of the audit, we also obviously optimize all the on-page. So make sure the meta titles are in check, make sure that the H1 tags are in check. Basically, we want to make sure that uh, when Google lands on a page, that it clearly knows what kind of keyword we're trying to target with that page. And then once we have all of that uh, kind of uh, finished and, and cleaned up and all of the audit suggestions implemented, we will just put together like, a content plan. And uh, con- we have a very interesting kind of strategy on how we actually go about Doing the content plans so instead of planning the content month to month we will typically plan out like every single piece of content that can be written every piece of content every keyword that's ever been searched for example if we're trying to rank for let's say phone cases we will export every keyword that contains case cases and that usually gives us about 100 200 300 thousand keywords to filter through I could imagine. And <laughs> that's crazy. Basically, it's 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 uh, it's like a ten it's like a ten day sometimes two week process for us to go through all of these keywords and organize them. We, we obviously use like clustering tools that help us merge these keywords into groups. Mm. Uh, but basically, then we will have like all the different keyword ideas and key, uh, and articles that we can write. And the next step is that we actually organize all of these article ideas into something called silos. For example, if we have, if we're writing about phone cases and I don't know, we have five or 10 articles that are about kind of the maintenance of phone cases, like how to clean your phone case, how to I don't know, sanitize, how to do this, how to do that, we will organize all of these articles into one group, into one silo. Mm. And by doing that, we, of course, interlink all of these articles together and, and just improve the relevancy. And when you do this, it's the number one way to just kind of prove to Google that you're an authority in the space. If you cover every single keyword with phone cases in there that, that's ever been searched, that's the number one way that you can show and kind of just tell Google that you're an authority in the space. Amazing. Amazing. So let's, I want to kind of, for people listening, some people know what a silo is. Some people don't know what a silo is. So do you want to break down what a silo looks like for yourself? Like, when you yeah, are you well, talking pillar article and all of them are interlinked with you know internal linking? Like, what is a silo? Like, say you've got phone cases and you have just gone through and just got all of the um, all of those keywords. How like what sort of article structure are you looking like in a silo? Say you've got. To be honest, it's not really complicated. All that we do uh, when we're creating a silo is we find the relevant theme and we find articles that all contain these relevant themes, so the articles that are relevant to each other. Mm. And a silo is just a fancy kind of name for, for a group of articles. 
Mm -hmm. And in that group of articles, one article needs to be defined as the parent page, kind of as the parent article. Like the pillar article. Host. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That will host all of these other articles. And that's pretty much it. Then we interlink all of these articles in one group. So one article needs to link to all the other articles in the same group. And obviously, because we want to, this is essentially just supporting content. We're using this supporting content to rank the main money page, which is going to be the collection called phone cases. So all of these articles in this kind of silo or cluster group that you can also call it, mm -hmm. will link back to the phone cases collection, which is the money page, which is where all the, uh, all the kind of revenue will actually come from. That's your main sort of call to action link, right? In on each of those pages or articles or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, yeah. Call to action. But what we're doing with this is we're just building a topical kind of relevance, topical authority for the phone cases collection. Because we have all of these articles and all of these pages answering every single question that's ever been typed in in, in terms of phone cases. And we're directly pushing that authority and the traffic to the phone cases collection. Amazing. Amazing. That's so how many articles are we looking at? How many pages? Are uh, we at? I mean, so roughly. We, we, yeah, I mean, we don't really go with the number of articles just because every article will have different word count. But yeah. an absolute minimum that we'll do is 20,000 words per month. For some of our clients, we handle 100,000 words per month. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite a process. So it's uh, a lot of <laughs> uh, content writing, but it's something that works and in my opinion, if we're very serious about it, this is the number one way to really become the outward in the space. Especially with organic, right? Because Correct. that's what your yeah. your, your e-commerce SEO is. You're ranking organically and getting organic traffic. I mean, it's it can be easy to just throw ads behind some of the products to boost them up, get them in Google or wherever you're advertising to, to that. So... With with the uh, content that you do create, I'm sure you have like a, a pixel or a tag on each of those pages so you can do remarketing to them as well as like a, course, an extra course. layer. Yeah. Yeah. So like one of the, just to kind of explain. So whenever we, like these brands that we work with, it's always the number one reason and the number one motivation behind them approaching us is they're spending way too much on ads and obviously ads are always they can be constant, but they can also be very unreliable, especially with uh, iOS uh, updates uh, rolling out with, for email, for, for Facebook ads and everything like that. So yeah, it's, uh, we, we always have, obviously they have the pixel on there, but something that we always focus on are, are pop-ups so that we can get as many people into, into the email kind of newsletter as well. So for example, if we're doing a lot of different kind of, I don't know, top uh, phone cases styles, we will add a pop-up that will say, do you want to see like the, I don't know, top 100 phone cases, uh, phone case styles of 2021, just opt-in and you'll get the PDF. That gets them into the, into the opt-in, into email marketing. And obviously with e-commerce, email marketing typically makes between 25 to 30% of the revenue. Um, if, if it doesn't, then you really need to look into email You're marketing. doing it well enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that's, yeah. Uh, that's how we monetize all of the traffic. Yeah, yeah. Because some people, that's a big piece of the pie. Some people may listen to this and go, oh, cool. okay, cool. I can go away and, you know, create content and rank in Google and get traffic. But the goal isn't really just traffic. The goal is sales, right? And the goal is to get them closer to that sale. And if you can tag them or whichever way you can remarket to them is, 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 the best, right? And remarketing exactly. without having to pay money on ads, i.e. email marketing is a beautiful thing. So I'm, I want people, I just want to emphasize on that because people might listening may be going, Oh, great. I can just create articles and make a lot more money with my e-commerce site. But there's a whole strategy on the back end of getting that traffic, right? Yeah. Like, cause the, the articles, the articles to be, to be perfectly honest with you, they, the main purpose of the articles is to boost up the main collection page because the article itself usually won't make you a lot of money. Sure, it will get you the traffic, but the traffic doesn't directly result, um, at least with the articles, doesn't directly result in money in your pocket. It does result in that if you get the collection ranking higher because the collection will bring in a lot of revenue. So yes. the like adding the pop-up to the to the blogs is just another way to to monetize them, right? Because it's gonna be very, very 
tricky. It doesn't happen often that someone's going to find an answer to, I don't know, how to clean your phone case and buy a phone case from you because it's just not realistic. But if you use one of the other ways to monetize, you can do it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So that's your content marketing strategy. Awesome. And then do you have a, a link building strategy for those pieces of content or do you do a link building strategy for say the products as, you know, as examples for some people that may have great content around those yeah, yeah. products? So we do a mix. Uh, we do a mix. I mean, we have a, many relationships with the, with the media publications and we usually just acquire links that way by doing these partnerships. We usually do a mix of sending the links to money pages and also sending links to, to blog pages. Now, I see a lot of brands that just either, they just, most of them will just send the links to money pages. So, mm -hmm. money pages, collection, and product pages. Yeah. But it's simply not realistic. Like, typically, blog articles should have more links than, uh, than the money pages because obviously they have more uh, kind of resourceful information. So, people um, should, uh, should link to those more. We do a 50-50 approach. So we, we send about 50% of the links to, to the money pages, so collection and product pages, and the other 50% to parent pages. So before we were talking about kind of the silos and the groups and how we always define the parent page, we will send about half of the links to parent pages because when you link to a parent page, that external link, that backlink that you just acquired will not only boost up the parent page, but it will also boost up the entire silo because it's all interlinked. And the entire silo will then boost up your main collection page just in a, in a more natural way. Awesome. Awesome. It's a great strategy. It's a, I, I really, after hearing this, it's, it's really cool how you put this together. That's it for part one of this episode with Benjamin Struznik. And you can find out more on Benjamin and what he actually does over at Golden Web. Dot net and the link will be in the description too and in part two of this training that benjamin did with us in our mastermind we talk about what most e-commerce businesses are actually doing wrong when they're trying to grow their website and what they should be focusing on instead and doing differently to really make an impact in the growth and grow their revenue we talk about how to increase people's revenue by focusing on the back end and what with what you need to do in the back end. The back end's a broad term, but what type of things you need to do in the back end to increase that revenue, to increase the amount of ROI that you're getting back from your business. We also talk about how to do remarketing without spending a boatload of cash on ads or any money on ads for that matter. We also answer a bunch of questions from our mastermind members too. So if you want to get access to part two, or any of other our other trainings in the inner circle with all of our awesome guests, you can join the mastermind by going to buyingonlinebusinesses.co forward slash inner circle. I look forward to seeing you. If you've got any questions at all about the episode or about growing your business, I do a lot of business coaching. Please reach out to me at jared at buyingonlinebusinesses.com and I look forward to chatting to you there. Bye. Hey, YouTube watcher. If you thought that video is good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out. It's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.